fish. Sometimes we may want to write a polynomial function, which might be something like q of x1, x2, uh, which is in the form of x1 squared plus four lots of x1, x2. This might be called an interaction effect here, plus some amount of the x2 squared. So it's a polynomial form uh, quadratic. Okay, and in this case, going backwards to find out the rules in place. Best way is to do it with this general form. So in, a sen in essence, what we have here, this is matrix form. And it's something we want to go back from. So we do matrix multiplication. Eventually, it becomes a polynomial. So let's have a look at how that works. Firstly, we're going to multiply this matrix, which is a 1 by 2, by a 2 by 2. You see that the inner validates that it's possible, it matches, and then the outer will give us the result. So 1 by 2 is what we're going to end up with, which is the same as what we have over here. And with that in mind, uh, and it might be a rather long one, with that in mind, have a look, at just a reminder, it's the row here multiplied by the column that's going to be the element that goes there and then again this with the second column will be the element that goes there so firstly we've got x1 times a so we call that a x1 plus c x2 like so so this and this, this and this, I mean, add them together. The second element is where we have the same row, but now we're multiplied by the second column. So we have B, X1, plus D, X2. So this is our one by two result. Okay, there's no comma there. This is just a gap to show different elements. Now, we fill in what we didn't do anything with. We have another operation. Let's see if it's valid. We've got a 1 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 1. We can see that it's valid. And the result is going to be a 1 by 1. In essence, just a number, a single expression. So the same as before, it's going to be uh, this multiplied by this. Or equivalently, this with this and this with this. So with that in mind, let's multiply. We can choose arrows if we wish. So this is going to leave us with a x1 squared, because that's multiplied by itself, plus c x1 x2. If you'll forgive me, I'll do that in order. It could be x2 x1. And then we're going to add to it this. So this is going to be b x1 x2 interaction effect again, and then finally dx2 squared. It's multiplied by itself there. So this is interesting. This becomes a x squared plus you've got this many of x1, x2 plus this amount of x1, x2. In essence, we can do, let's do it in order, b plus c x1, x2, plus d lots of x2 squared. Now, you know what you're thinking, b plus c could be anything, right? So how do you know to divide by 2? The fact is that this here is a symmetric matrix, okay? This means that no matter what is on the diagonal here, these two elements diagonal are going to be equal. So whatever is in front of this um, interaction of, this is the interaction of x1, x2, whatever is in front of this um, is going to be shared into 2, and that will be the value of b, and it will also be the value of c. So let's take it to the example in the question. So here we have a polynomial. Here is the polynomial. It's probably a question. 
There are certain coefficients, for example, a 1 there, but we don't write it, a 4 here, and a 2 here. Uh, where do they come from? They come from a fairly standard format up here. And this format has particularities in its design. For example, the x1, the x2 as a row vector there, and the x1, x2 as a column vector here are fairly standard. If you had more variables, all that would happen is these would be extended. You'd have a similar 3 by 3 matrix here, and your x1, x2, x3 down there as a column vector. What we have is a quadratic, because we have two variables. So we know our standard format is a lot like this one up here. We can go ahead and use this when thinking about a standard format for what the answer will look like. There's a few rules that we learned from expanding the general form. So we know the four elements are to go in here. What are they? If we look at the expansion, um, the x squared down here, the a is in front of the x squared term. In other words, whatever is in front of the x1 squared is going to be elements up here, the top left. So in our case, we have a 1 there. And like with the x1, whatever is in front of the x2 squared is a d. That was the bottom right element. So we could call that element 2, 2. And in our case here, the element, the sorry, number in front of x2 squared is a 2. So that's just going to go in straight away as it is. With the other two elements, we have a 4. We know that this matrix here, as said earlier, is a symmetric matrix. Okay? And that the summation of these two should equal 4. We know that this element and this element are equal. So it's a case of doing 4 over 2 to find out what goes there. Now I write 4 over 2 because a lot of the time this number might not necessarily be an even number and you can put a fraction there. But in our case we can replace that with 2. This expansion works for a 3 variable as well which I thoroughly recommend doing. We'll quickly go through it here. So to get you started I've set up the general form and what we're going to have to do is validate the matrix operation and then expand. So 3 by 3, clearly we could see it's valid. So our result is going to be a 1 by 3. So there's a lot to take in here. The first is going to be this row times this. And it's going to be the same row times this. And again, the same row uh, multiplied by the final column. So this is where we're going to take it. We have x a x1, so let's give ourselves a lot of space. a x1 plus d x2 plus g x3. So, okay, so this is our, the result is a 1 by 3, right? So this is our first element in, in a 1 by 3. This is our first element. And now we've got to do the, the next element, which is going to be our b column multiplied in. So that's going to be b x1 plus e x2 plus h x3. And our final element, uh, which I'll try and squish on, cx1 plus fx2 plus ix3. And as you can see, space is, a absolute, is an absolute commodity. I'm just going to add at the end, squish in the x1, x2, x3. We'll validate the next operation. It's going to be a 1 by 3 multiplied by 3 by 1. As you can see, it's valid, and it's going to result in a single term. This is going to multiply by the x1. This is going to multiply x2. And this is going to multiply the x3. Color does help. I'll start the process off, and you might need a couple of lines here. So we've got x1 multiplied by all of these here. But we don't have 2 and 3. So only particular letters, or should we say elements in the matrix, will be interacting with particular 
forms. There is a pattern to notice. So let's see if you can spot it as we go through. Yeah, look at that. We've got the one, two there and the one, two interaction there. So let's see how they play out and where they are. You may start to notice something if I do it strictly in order. So instead of x1, x2, I do x2, x1. Because I'm doing the x2 multiplied in. So in that regard, um, the order might help you see the pattern. This is all one term, and we might look at like terms now. So we've, we've clearly got our squares, so those. And it looks as though, if we get rid of these colors, A, E, and I go down the diagonal. So there's no addition of terms. They are singular. They're on their own. So whatever is in front of the x squared parts are going to go as they are, down the diagonal. So that's good to know. Uh, we do have an element here of repetition. So x1, x2, um, and x1, x2. We want a different color now. We'll look at x1, x3, and x3, x1. And finally, x2, x3, and x3, x2. And these are all on some sort of pattern. So if we look at x2, x3, that's h. And if we look at x3, x2, that's f. So as you can see, they pertain to the symmetry of the symmetric matrix. About the x3, x1, that's c and g. Okay, they are the symmetric elements as well. And the final one, uh, what we're using color-wise, I think this one, um, x1, x2, a d, and b. So this is how we're going to get our answers. We look at an example where we have three and we can see it better. So with this example here we have the x squared as a one in front of it. Fun thing to notice is we have three unknowns. Okay so this is going to be a setup with three um, unknowns therefore a three by three matrix. How do we get our elements? Well, what we were saying earlier, the pattern, is that the little subscripts here refer to almost coordinate systems. So this one squared technically would be x1, x1, which has a position 1, 1. Well, the position 1, 1 is here, the top left. If we think about, we have a 3 by 3, right? So the value here is unique. It's, it's on its own, and it has a coefficient of 1. And so a 1 is going to go there. In fact, we could go through and do the squares first. We have another one here, and they exist just once. So this is, in essence, x2, x2, which has a position 2, 2. Position 2, 2 is in the middle here, and has a coefficient of 3. So we write 3. Just going to repeat that for the last one. The 6 is 3, 3. Okay. What we don't mention here, we don't have all the parts. Um, anything that's not mentioned, it gets a 0. So I can see we have 1, 2. Let's do that one first. So a position of 1, 2 is here. But bear in mind that that could also be 2, 1. So according to symmetry, we have to split the 4 half and half. So this would be 2, or you could get away with 4 over 2. It's probably best to just simplify such simple calculations. Let's have another look at what we have, which is 2, 3. So 2, 3, we go down 2 and across 3. So we have this element and this element, by the looks of it. That has a coefficient of 8, so 8 divided by 2 is going to give us 4 in both of those positions. As you can see, we've completed every element in our polynomial, but we don't have some of the elements of the matrix. Therefore, they are 0, because they don't exist in the polynomial, so their coefficient will be 0. And now we've written the polynomial into matrix form. Hopefully this is really helpful and uh, if you like content like this, let me know. You can make more.
I can do a ton of practice questions. If you want to support this channel, head on over to Patreon. You can get extra resources and a free gift with every sub. <laughs>